Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I will discuss the solution of week 7 of database management system. For question number 1, we have to identify which of the following is true about the given schedule. So for this question, first we will swap all the non-conflicting instruction of the above schedule and here the T1 and T2 both are working on different data items so the schedule is serializable both as T1 and T2 and T2 and T1 which is option A. For the second question the answer is option C which is the schedule is both view and conflict serializable schedule. For the third question the possible number of conflict serializable schedule is 1 which is option A. For the fourth question the possible number of the view serializable schedule is 4 which is option D. For the fifth question we have been given the four transaction T1, T2, T3 and T4 and we have to find identify the correct weight for graph for the above scenario. For this question, when TI requests a data item currently being held by TJ, then the edge TI will be dependent on TJ is inserted in the weight for graph and TI is dependent, TJ is dependent on TI implies that T1 will wait for TJ to release the data item. For this question, since T1 is waiting for the transaction T2 and T4, therefore the arrow will begin from T1 and end at T2 and similarly for T4 also the arrow will begin and end at T4. So among this B and D are the two options in which the arrow is beginning from T1 and ending at T2 and T4 respectively and in the second condition it is given that the transaction is T2 which is waiting for transaction T3 and T4. Since uh, T3 and T4 is waiting so the arrow will start at T2 and end at T3 and T4 and if we see it is correct given in the option B. So for this the answer is B. For the sixth question we have been given the two transaction T1 and T2 and there are uh, exclusive and share mode lock and we have to identify which of the following statement are true. So for this question transaction T1 is first commits and then it unlocks all the locks the exclusive mode as well as the shared mode that is why T1 will fo follow the regress to phase locking protocol but transaction T2 it first unlocks the shared mode lock before the commit and unlocks only the exclusive mode lock after it commit that's why it will follow strict two phase locking protocol and not the regress to phase locking protocol so for this the answer is option C that is only T1 will following the regress to phase locking protocol which is option C. For the seventh question the different transactions have been given with the different timestamp and we have to identify the correct statement in respect of the wound weight deadlock prevention. So in the wound weight deadlock scheme if there is a transaction TA1 and it requests a data item held by the TA2 then if TA1 is older here older means the transaction with the smaller timestamp so if TA1 is older than TA2 then TA1 wounds means it wounds it uh, force rollback TA2 that is TA2 will be aborted and if TA1 is younger younger means it will have uh, the larger timestamp then TA1 will wait to release the data item held by TA2 and in this case the transaction T2 and 
टी थ्री इज यंगर देन टी वन बिकॉज द ट्रांजेक्शन टी टू टाइम स्टैम्प इज फोर्टीन एंड टी थ्री इज सिक्सटीन सो दे आर ग्रेटर देन द टाइम स्टैम ऑफ टी वन विच इज ट्वेल्व सो दे टी टू एंड टी थ्री आर यंगर सो दे विल वेट फॉर टी वन टू रिलीज द डेटा आइटम सो फॉर दिस द आंसर इज option b and option c for the eighth question the following schedule is given and the correct statement is option d for the ninth question for the given schedule we have to find if the schedule is recoverable and cascadeless or not so to be uh, to a schedule to be recoverable if the transaction tj reads the data item previously written by a transaction ti then the commit operation of the ti must appear before the commit operation of tj and to for the schedule to be cascadeless the transaction tj should read a data item previously written by ti and the commit operation of ti should appear before the read operation of tj so in this case in t2 if we see we see that t2 reads the data item x which was previously written by t1 and t1 committed before the commit operation of t2 so the schedule is recoverable but the commit operation of t1 it does not appear immediately before the read operation of t2 thus the schedule is not cascadeless so for this the answer is option a that is the schedule is only recoverable for the 10th question the correct option which is the transaction control language it is safe point which is option d if you have got any different answer please mention in the comment section and before the final submission of the assignment do check the pin comment if there is any changes in the answer i will mention it in the pinned comment and if you like the video do if you like the video and found the video helpful do share the video with your friends thank you for watching the video